He now has an office in Iowa, preparing the masses there for his eventual presidential message. He leads in the Iowa polling. He's the governor who fought the fight against big labor, thrashed the unbelievers. Therefore, Scott Walker is already the anointed one for the Republican presidential nomination. Loyal watchers of Midpoint can already glean the dripping sarcasm, of course. Welcome in the staff writer for politics at Slate Magazine to join us on this, Betsy Woodruff. Betsy, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Betsy, how dare you put out an article that says why Scott Walker isn't a slam dunk for grassroots conservatives. Betsy, what's wrong with you? How dare you? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a rhino, <laughs> rhino surrender caucus member. What, what can I tell you? How can uh, that be possible here? Because he has been, we've been told that he is the anointed one by many people. Yeah, well, look, here's the really interesting thing about Scott Walker. Scott Walker has been through the ringer politically. He's run for re-election three times in the last four years. It's basically been nonstop campaigning for him. However, he's only had to been running against Democrats. He's never really been vetted by conservatives and by the right. Basically, new liberals have always said, this guy's so conservative, he's a crazy Republican, uh, he's a winger, blah, blah, blah. But conservatives have never gone after him and said, maybe he's not that conservative. Maybe he's weak on a couple important issues. So we can expect to see him getting a hammering from the other end of the spectrum, I think, in the coming months. Okay, so the other end of the spectrum, when the Republicans start coming after them, uh, coming after him, then what then are they afraid of? Uh, the biggest issues that I think make Scott Walker vulnerable from the right, there's three. Immigration, Common Core, and marriage. All of those issues are incredibly important to Republican primary voters, and on all those issues, he's been a little wishy-washy. When it comes to immigration, he's kind of equivocated. He said he opposed amnesty, but he says that if someone pays back taxes and takes English classes and then has a pathway to citizenship, that that's not actually amnesty. Um, on the Common Core, he's he's changed what kind of cha what kind of legislation he supports in Wisconsin, and on marriage, uh, he's he's just been very up in the air about it. He's what, really what, dodged what, what, taking a strong point. We're talking though about the Republicans here, and there are so many viewpoints here, and so many Republicans here. Honestly, Betsy, in your opinion, is there any Republican right now who could galvanize this party? Who could? And nobody's going to get 100 percent, but at least get close to it and get everybody behind him or her. I don't know. It's going to be really <laughs> tricky <laughs> because you have you have Republicans running in the in the primary who you know you take pick any two guys at random and there's a, there's a decent chance they disagree on literally everything. Uh, national Republicans talk about how it's a big tent party and there's room for ideological diversity, but it gets to a point where you have people like Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio who support a pathway to citizenship for, for immigrants who've come here illegally, and then you have people like Ted Cruz who say that any sort of "Quote unquote amnesty would would be a massive existential threat to the United States. So it's a it's a very it's going to be fun to watch the debates. I'll put it that way. All right, let's put it this way then. With a little bit over a minute left, in your personal opinion, then covering politics and watching this, is it fair to say that maybe there are some on the left, perhaps even Hillary Clinton's campaign, who is salivating at the thought of having a Scott Walker to run against or somebody like that? They want that to happen because, frankly, they think they can beat him. Absolutely, without a doubt. And Walker has has a lot to prove. Look, he's he's shown already that he can take on he can take on liberals. He's shown he can get legislation passed. He's shown he can win in Wisconsin. But on a national level, he hasn't hasn't really uh, he hasn't really demonstrated what he's capable of. And I think I think Democrats, Hillary, maybe even a, a Bernie Sanders or an Elizabeth Warren type could potentially be excited to have him as their Republican nominee. All right, a couple quick questions here then for you. Um, could he beat Hillary? Maybe. Okay. Possible. Who Depends. could beat Hillary on the right? That's a good question. Um, That's why I'm here. We ask those questions on a daily basis. There you go. <laughs> I think when it comes to beating Hillary, one of the most important things is going to be fundraising, which is kind of an unfortunate thing, but she's going to have so much money. So the Republican candidate is going to have to be able to raise just boo coodles of dollars. Uh, any candidate who's not great at fundraising, who has trouble with you know doing the whole schmoozing thing, is going to be at a disadvantage facing her. Jeb Bush is going to be great at fundraising. Marco Rubio is going to be great at fundraising, but it remains to be seen if those guys could actually get through a Republican primary. All right, Betsy, we got you on record for a few things here. We're all out of time, but we're going to keep you here. We're going to come back and we're going to watch this as things go on and look at all these various races here. Those people of Scott Walker, they're not going to be happy with you at all. <laughs> Betsy, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, take care. The case of the lawyer about to expose a president who then winds up with a hole in his head. That's coming up next. Break out the magnifying glass, Watson. We're going in.